Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to continue doing some problem solving with area and perimeter. So our learning goal for today says, I can solve word problems involving area and perimeter using all four operations. So that means you're going to have to use possibly addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division to be able to solve our problems today. So the materials that you'll need for this lesson are just your problem set. Okay, so make sure that you grab that before we get started. All right, friends, so again, today we're going to solve word problems with area and perimeter. Remember to use the RDW process, which is read the problem, draw and label a picture, and then write number sentences and a statement to solve. Okay, the big part at the end is to make sure you're writing that statement because that's telling me that you know what the final answer is. We often forget that part a lot when we are solving these problems. So I'm kind of having to look at your work and guess of what you think the final answer is. So please make sure that you write it in a statement. So the statement would be like the perimeter of the shape is 24 inches. That's your statement that you would write. Okay, all right, so let's take a look at problem one. It says Kyle puts two rectangles together to make the L-shaped figure below. He measures some of the side lengths and records them as shown below. Okay, so here is his shape. We need to find the perimeter of Kyle's shape. So friends, this helps me to kind of turn this into a rectangle. So I can see like the opposite sides, remember have the same length. So I need to fill in the unknown sides first. I can't solve the perimeter of this shape until I know the unknown side lengths. So that has to be the first step that you do. So find those unknown, unknown side lengths, okay? And then you're going to find the perimeter of Kyle's shape. Now, these yellow lines that I drew here, I just drew them so I would be able to see maybe some opposite sides and how that might help me. So I could see that 16 across the bottom is the same as the white line and the yellow dotted line across the top. So I'm gonna try and use those to be able to help me and how I can use those eight inches in that white line. The opposite side, which is the yellow dotted line on the top is also going to be eight inches. So that's how that's kind of helping me. Okay, so there's like a little hint for you before you get started with those missing side links and then find the perimeter. Once you do that, click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Okay, so let's take a look at this. These are my unknown side links, A and B. I have to find those side links before I can solve for the perimeter. Well, before we pause the video, I kind of talked a little bit about how some of these numbers here can already help us find those unknown side links. Well, if I know that this side of my rectangle, the bottom, is opposite of the top, they have to be equal. Okay, we know that from rectangles, opposite sides are equal. So that means the top and the bottom have to be 16. Well, if I look this side right here and this side are the same, that's why I drew in that yellow dotted line to help me see that that is another side length right there. So if I know that this is eight inches, now I'm able to solve for the side lengths here. So I would do 16 minus eight inches to find the side length for A. Well, I know that 16 minus eight equals eight. So that means A is not unknown anymore. I know that it's eight. So I can easily, friends, check this by saying the top across is eight plus eight. That equals 16, the same as the bottom, okay? So I'm gonna take that away. Now we're gonna look at the opposite sides on the right and the left. Well, I know that the left is the same as the right, but I have uh, some missing information right there. I have that dotted yellow line. So because of that, I need, to, I need to subtract. So I'm going to take the total that's on the left and subtract the white line on the right, which is six inches. And that would give me six inches. So that means that this dotted yellow line is six inches. Because if I add the dotted yellow line plus the white line, that equals the whole side length, which is 12. So six plus six is 12, which is the same as the opposite side, okay? So I'm gonna take that away. Now, if I know that this side is opposite of this side, right? That makes like my rectangle. Well, that means that B has to also be six inches, okay? So now I'm gonna take all this away and I know all of my side lengths now. So because I know all the side lengths, I'm able 
to add to find the perimeter. So I'm just going to add all of these numbers together. Now, this is a lot of numbers, friends, I'm not going to lie. So the chances of you making a mistake here can be pretty high. So what I would suggest is that you need to add these numbers two times, okay? Add them two times. If you get the same answer twice, then chances are you've added them correctly. If you get a different answer each time, then that means you might have made a mistake when you, or not you might have, that means you did make a mistake when you were adding, okay? So just make sure that you do this part twice. Okay, so when I added all of these numbers together, I got 56 inches. So my statement to answer part A would be the perimeter of Kyle's shape is 56 inches. Okay, so that's going over part A. Now we're going to jump to part B. It says find the area of Kyle's shape. Well, friends, I don't know about you, but remember, this is kind of going back. We've learned this a, a little bit ago. So what you want to do for this is you want to split this into two rectangles. Now, you can split this here or you can split across where the 8 inches is. Either way is fine, but this is just how I'm choosing to find the area of my uh, rect or my shape, the L shape here. I'm splitting this into two rectangles because I'm going to find the area of rectangle 1 and then I'm going to find the area of rectangle 2 and then I'm going to combine those to find the total area. Remember how we've done that in the past? Yeah, we've done that. Okay, so you guys are going to pause the video, you're going to find the area of this L-shaped figure for Kyle's shape, and then you're going to complain when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Okay, so again, I drew my line there to represent two different rectangles. So I'm going to color in or just do an outline real quick so we know which ones I'm talking about. I'm going to talk about this blue rectangle right here. So we know that the area is length times width. So that's 12 times 8 inches, okay? So for me, that can be a little bit tricky. That 12 is a larger number. So I'm going to use the break apart and distribute or the distributive property to break apart this 12 into a 10 and 2 because I know that I can multiply with 10 like that. Super easy, okay, because it's just counting by 10s. So once I've done that, now I need to write my new equation. So it will be... 10 times 8 plus 2 times 8. Okay, you see where those new fat, those new equations are coming from, right? I'm taking the 10 and the 2 and multiplying it by 8. Okay, so I know that 10 times 8 is 80, and 2 times 8 is 16. So now I just have to add 80 plus 16, which is 96. So the area of this first blue rectangle is 96 square inches because remember area needs square in the label okay now I'm going to jump over to this smaller one which happens to be I'm using a yellow outline for this one so the yellow outline I just need to multiply the area equals 8 inches times 6 inches I don't have to do the break apart distribute strategy because those are smaller factors so 8 times 6 equals 48 square inches so the area of the other rectangle is 48 square inches. Well, now I know to find the total area, I just have to combine those two rectangles. So the total area equals 96 square inches plus 48 square inches. If I add those together, that equals 144 square inches. To write that in a statement would be the area of Kyle's shape is 144 square inches. Okay, so that's part B of problem one. Hopefully you guys got that part right too. If not, this is why we're going over these problems together because they can be a little bit tricky and they require more than one step. So if you're struggling with this, that's okay. That's why we're doing it together. All right, so let's look at part C. So it says Kyle makes two copies of the L-shaped figure to create the rectangle shown below. Find the perimeter of the rectangle. Okay, so here's the shape that he made. They only labeled part of it. But friends, I want you to remember this shape right here that we worked so hard on finding all those missing side links is the same thing of Kyle's new L-shaped figure, okay? He just took them and made a second copy and flipped it over, okay, to put the two L's together to make the new rectangle, okay? I only made the copy on the bottom right there because I can't show back to my work on the top of the page like you guys can, okay? So I'm gonna use this little picture here on the right to help as a reference for me, okay? So what you need to do is you need to find 
the side lengths for the rest of this shape. They told you 12 inches, they told you 16 inches. You need to use the numbers that are in the shape in part A to be able to help you fill in the missing side lengths around the rest of the rectangle. Now remember friends, we don't care about those lines that are in the middle of this rectangle because that's not the perimeter. You're only finding the outside perimeter of the rectangle. So you're gonna end up adding those four sides together. Okay, so pause the video, find the perimeter of the rectangle. Well, first, label the unknown side lengths and then find the perimeter of Kyle's L-shaped figure. And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Okay, so friends, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point to some parts on the shapes, and I'm gonna use that bottom shape to be able to help us. Now again, this is the top shape on your problem one, okay? I just had to bring in this little one to be able to help show us. Okay, so it's just like a shrunken version of the work that we did at the top of the page. Okay, so if I know that this side, that's the same as this side, right? Because it's the same shape, they just didn't tell me that side in this in part C. So I'm going to label it as eight inches. Okay. Then we know that this side is the same as this guy because all they did was rotate it around so the bottom was now on the top. Okay, so this is 16 inches. We know that opposite sides are always equal, so that again is going to be 12. And then this side right here is going to be eight inches as well. Okay, again, because they just rotated it. Okay, so now I have all of my side lengths. So I'm able to add all of those numbers together to find the total perimeter. Again, remember, you need to make sure that you are adding these twice to be able to find the correct answer. If you get the same answer twice, you're golden and you can stop. If you get a different answer the second time you add them, you need to go back and add them a third time because you made a mistake, okay? So when I add all of these numbers together, I get 72 inches. So my statement would be the perimeter of the rectangle is 72 inches. Okay, so that's how you would solve part C of problem one. All right, friends, we are done with problem one. We are heading to problem two. So it says Jeremiah and Haley use a piece of rope to mark a square space for their booth at the science fair. The area of their space is 49 square feet. What is the length of rope that Jeremiah and Haley use if they leave a three foot opening so they can get in and out of the space? Okay, friends, so I don't know about you, but the first time that I looked at that problem, I thought, holy cow, that's a lot of, a lot of stuff for me to figure out there. So what I decided to do was underline some important information. Well, one thing that was super important was they told me that the shape is a square, right? Because they said a square space. So that means, what do we know, well, actually, what do we know about a square and the side lengths of squares? Are they the same? Are they different? What do we know about the side lengths of a square? Yeah, they're the same. So all four sides would be the same, okay? So that's why the square is important. The next thing is they told me that the area of their space is 49 square feet. Well. If it's telling me the area, I know the area is length times width, and all of the side lengths are the same. So that means I need to find the two factors that give me a total area of 49 square feet. And then I would know two of the sides, right? And then I would really know a third side because the sides are equal, right? But then it tells me that they leave a, um, they leave a three foot opening so they can get in and out of the space. So that means instead of one side length being seven full feet, they're leaving an opening of three. So I need to leave a little gap there that's three feet. And then I would label the two side lengths that are there. So they're not gonna be seven all the way across. It's gonna be leaving that three foot space and having those other two side lengths, you need to find what those would total, okay? What those would be. Okay, so those are just some key pieces of information that hopefully will help you guys as you are solving this problem. So I want you to pause the video. You need to draw out this shape. You need to find the side lengths of this shape using the area of 49 square feet. And then you need to make sure that you're leaving that three foot opening. And then we need to find the length of rope that Jeremiah and Haley use. 
Now, remember, the rope goes around the outside of their booth. So think about when you're measuring for around the outside, is that area or perimeter? Okay, so I want you to pause the video, solve this problem, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. All right, so here is my science fair booth that I came up with. Okay, so I drew my side lengths are the same. And then at the top, I left a three foot opening for them to walk in and out of. Okay, well, I know that seven times seven equals 49. So that's where I'm gonna label these two side lengths because the length times the width gives me my area, which they told me in the problem was 49 square feet. Well, I know that in the square, all of the side lengths are the same. So this side is also seven feet. But this side is my three foot opening. So I can't label that whole side as seven feet because there's a three foot space right there. So I'm gonna actually do seven feet minus three feet because we know that opposite sides are equal. So if the bottom is seven feet and the top has to be seven feet, but I have to take out that three foot opening. So that means seven minus three equals four. Well, this four feet marks this space and this space. So that's pretty easy for me to be able to split that into two parts, right? Four feet divided by two is two feet. So each one of those openings or those um, small spaces by the opening are going to be two feet. So now I know all of the sides of the science fair booth and how much rope they would need. So I'm going to find the perimeter because when they're looking about the space that goes around their science fair booth, that's telling me perimeter. So I would add seven plus seven plus seven plus two plus two. Well, friends, when I solve this, I look and see that there's three seven. So I could say seven times three is 21 plus two more feet is 23 plus two more feet is 25. So my statement for this problem to solve would be the length of the rope is 25 feet. Okay, all right, so awesome job with that one, friends. All right, friends, so here's problem three, and I have a tip for you, okay? It says Vivian draws four identical rectangles as shown below to make a new larger rectangle. The perimeter of one of the small rectangles is 18 centimeters, and the width is six centimeters. What is the perimeter of the new larger rectangle? So my tip for you again, friends, is this is a problem that's similar to where you are having to take the total perimeter of 18, you're dividing it in two, right? You're cutting it in half, and then you're finding the factors that include six centimeters of the width, okay? Then you're able to find the missing side lengths um, and solve for the total perimeter of the larger rectangle, okay? So that's my tip for you. You guys are doing problem three on your own, and you will be submitting that to me. Also, problem four is optional for today's lesson, so make sure that um, you, if you want to give it a try, you can. If not, it's not required. Okay, so make sure to follow this tip. But overall, you guys did good work today solving word problems with area and perimeter. So please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends.